Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Mr. Dolan here again. Going to help you with some electricity circuit making stuff. I'm uh, just going to start real simple today, just some basics, some introductory things. Uh, specifically, what does all circuits need to have? What do they need to be successful, I guess? Success would be the way to say it. Uh, and then how do we measure voltage and amperage? Because there's actually different ways of doing that. Um, so first off, just kind of the basics of what electric circuits need. All electric circuits need a power source. And for us at this level, we're going to use batteries. Batteries are your power source. Think of them as like your engine. They are what provides the energy for the electrical circuit. And it's the energy that is actually the electricity that is allowing things to happen, whether that's light a light bulb or turn an engine or whatever it happens to be. Okay, um, so I got my battery here. I'm actually going to put it at the bottom. I think that's going to be easier. And then at the very minimum, all electric circuits need is a battery, and they need something that's going to use the electricity, the energy that the battery is providing. And in order for that to happen, there needs to be a complete loop. That's what it means by circuit. Okay, and when you have a complete loop, it has to go all the way from the positive and somehow make its way all the way back to the negative of the battery. And you can see here the arrows are showing the direction of the electrical flow. Okay, so question is, is what else can we add to this? Well, there's a lot of things we could add. Um, we could you know, break this. We could add what's called a resistor. Uh, resistors are used for a lot of different things. Um, they slow the electricity down to the point where it's safe for your circuit. Because uh, different things require different amounts of electricity. And notice the arrows here are traveling slower. Okay, and the reason for that is because this resistor is using up some of the energy from the battery. And when it uses up some of that energy, the electricity gets slowed down. Or it, <clears throat> think of it like a, a clog in a sink. It slows down how quickly the water drains through the sink. Um, similar to that. So that's another thing. Another thing we could add to this we could add a switch. Think of like your wall switch at home. You don't always want your lights on. And so what a wall switch does is when it's open, we call this open, it creates a gap. And in general, unless you have a ton of voltage, a ton of extra energy, the electricity just can't jump that gap. Okay, but if you close it, then it connects those two pieces together. They're touching, and as long as two pieces are touching, electricity can use that area where they're touching to start flowing again. So that's the basic format and structure of a circuit. <clears throat> now, two things that we measure for a circuit is voltage and amperage. I want you to think of, I guess for right now, the voltage is how quickly these arrows are moving. If I take my battery and I increase the voltage, notice the arrows increase, okay? And things like the light bulb gets brighter, and if you had a motor, it would be able to turn faster and whatever. Um, and something to notice here then is how do we measure the voltage of the battery? In other words, how much of the energy from the battery is being used by the light bulb and how much of the energy is being used by this resistor? Well, to do that, we have a voltmeter. Okay, the voltmeter usually has two different colors of, we call them leads, wires, and the positive one is what we call, is the red one, and the red one should always be on the side of your object that is closer towards the positive side of the battery. So I'm going to put positive here and the negative here. And what this is telling me is of the original 10 volts of electricity, this light bulb is using five of it, okay? In other words, it's using half the energy. 
Now, if you accidentally put the leads in the wrong direction, look at what happens. Notice it's the same number, but now it's just a negative. Okay, so if you ever see that, you can just switch them around. Okay, the other thing then is this one here. So again, positive is the red. That goes on the side. I said closest, but it should be the side. I should rephrase that. It's the side that leads back to the positive. So it has a direct link to the positive before it has the negative. And here's the negative. It's the side that is leading back to the negative. Okay, and notice this one is also using 5 volts. Well, an important thing to note, okay, these two add up to equal 10. That's something we're going to talk about later. This is a series circuit. We'll talk about why that's important later. Okay, so that's voltage. The other thing that we can measure is called amps. So if you think of voltage as how quickly the arrows are moving, how quickly the electricity is able to flow, the amps is measuring how much electricity. So an example there might be, uh, a lot of times we're going to use like rivers or streams as an example. Voltage is like how fast the water in the river is moving. So like if you took and isolated a little bit of water, it's like how much energy does it have? Because the faster the water moves, the more energy the water has. Amperage is like measuring how much water is able to move through the river. So if you have a really wide river and a really deep river, it's able to hold more water, right? And that water could be moving at different speeds. So the amount of water or the amount of electricity is what we call current or measured in amps. And this one you have to measure differently. To measure amps, the probe that we use, which is called an ammeter, actually has to become part of the circuit. Okay, it has to become part of the circuit. And the electricity actually has to flow through the device. Okay, a voltmeter doesn't need that because what this is measuring is the red wire is measuring how much voltage is going into the object and it measures then the voltage. Well, it can only do that if the electricity is not going through it because it would be using some of it. Amperage, however, just the way it's, it works is it has to become part of the circuit. So, real brief introduction. Again, to recap, what do all circuits need? Circuits need a power source. We're going to be using batteries. Circuits need something to use the electricity that's being created. It might be a light bulb or it might be a resistor. Okay. Some circuits have a switch. Not all, but some. Most actually have some sort of switch. And there are two things that we can measure. We can measure voltage. And in voltage, the wires are going on any object that you're trying to measure. Or we can measure current or amperage. And that has to actually become part of the circuit itself. The electricity has to flow through the meter that we use to measure amps. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Again, if this video made sense, if it helps you understand things better, please give me a thumbs up. That's a good way for me to know that my videos are working. If you have any comments, things that you could say might be improvements, or even if you see any mistakes that I made, please send those my way. Thanks, and enjoy.